Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I think it's on. Um, yeah, I have the pleasure to talk to you about PRF40H today. Um, that's a relatively new assumption, and we did a systematic study of this assumption. And this is joint work with Mark Fischlin, Felix Günther, and Christian Jansson. So PRF40H is short for pseudo-random function oracle de Fihelman. And as was already mentioned, uh, PRF-ODH is also a variant of the ODH assumption, which was introduced back in 2001 <coughs> by Abdallah Bellari and Rogaway. And PRF-ODH appears naturally in the context of Diffie-Hellman-based key exchanges, as we will see in a bit. And it was first introduced in 2012 here at Crypto, actually, uh, in the TLS 1.2 security analyses by Yaga et al. And since then, it has been frequently used uh, in different analyses of key exchange protocols. Let's dive right into it. So what is this PRF-ODH? So informally, PRF-ODH uh, guarantees that an adversary cannot distinguish a PRF that is keyed with a Diffie-Hellman value from random, even if the adversary knows the Diffie-Hellman shares that went into uh, the key, as well as the PRF values under related Diffie-Hellman keys. So more precisely, um, the adversary is asked to distinguish the PRF that is keyed with some G to the UV from random, even if it knows G, G to the U, G to the V, and it learns related PRF values under related Diffie-Hellman keys. So, and this learning of PRF values is modeled by these ODH oracles. So for example, the adversary may query the OU oracle on some tuple SX prime, and will then receive the PRF keyed under S to the U and with label X prime. And the OV oracle works just the same uh, except for that the key then is not S to the U, but S to the V. So this uh, models the learning of the related PRF values. Um, we did a first systematic study of this assumption because, because although it's been used quite a bit, um, there were some open questions. We will see that actually there's been a bunch of PRF ODH values, uh, PRF ODH assumptions around, and we established the relationships between those assumptions. Then we asked ourselves the question whether this PRF or the H actually relates to some more well-studied Diffie-Hellman assumption that we know of. And we answered this question by giving instantiations of PRF or the H. And our third result is in providing an impossibility result. And basically our impossibility result says that PRF or the H is most likely not a standard model assumption. And this is especially interesting because initially PRF ODH was introduced or was considered to be standard model as there is no immediate reference to a random oracle in the definition and our impossibility result now states that uh, this is most likely not the case. But before we come to our uh, contributions, I would like to show you how PRF ODH comes up in Diffie-Hellman based key exchange. So let's look at a simplified execution of a Diffie-Hellman based key exchange. We have our server Bob here, and Bob holds a, say, static key G to the V. So G to the V is Bob's public key, and V is the co corresponding secret key. And static means that it's a long-term key, so Bob will reuse this key whenever he's talking to clients. So for example, Alice could initiate a key exchange with Bob and send over her public key G to the U, will receive G to the V from Bob, and then they both derive a session key by First computing the shared Diffie-Hellman value, so G to the UV, and then keying a PRF with this on some uh, label X, which may, for example, be the transcript of the key exchange or something like that. Okay, and then they have a session key which they can use to encrypt communications. But nothing hinders our adversary from doing the same, right? So our adversary Eve also initiates a key exchange with Bob and derives a K prime value, which is keyed with G to the WV. Now, traditional key exchange security asks from our adversary to distinguish some session keys, say this one, uh, from random. However, we're in the setting where there are related PRF values around, related in the sense that the key that w goes into the PRF has a common Diffie-Hellman share with our so-called tested session key, so this K over here. As it turns out, just assuming DDH and the PRF security is not enough in this setting. But we find ourselves in the setting of PRF ODH. 
Our adversary is asked to distinguish a PRF value that is keyed with a Diffie-Hellman value while knowing the Diffie-Hellman shares that went into the computation as well as related PRF values. So this is exactly PRF ODH as we've seen it before. Now, I already indicated that there are different variants of the PRF ODH assumption out there. And this is due to the fact that these key shares have kind of lifespan. So they may be ephemeral, that means whenever a session is initiated, this value is generated freshly. Or they may be semi-static, that's kind of a medium lift notion, where these keys are reused in a kind of smaller number of sessions, or they're static uh, or long-term, and used hence in a large number of sessions. And these lifespans then directly determine how many related values the adversary can learn. So let's look at this in a bit more detail with our example. So we had our key exchange between Alice and Bob, and the resulting session key is supposed to be distinguished by the adversary from random. Um, for the sake of the argument right now, let's assume that both Alice and Bob have static keys. So they reuse these keys uh, whenever they're talking to other parties. So the situation is something like this, right? So on the one side, we have um, the values uh, where Alice is talking to someone, and she always uses the G to the U. And on the other side, we have the situation where someone is talking to Bob, and Bob always uses the G to the V. So on both sides, we have related PRF values. Um, yeah. So this is the situation that can come up very easily. And we model this, uh, when we talk about the PRF ODH assumption, we model the situation by giving the adversary access to these ODH oracles. So one for the OU oracle for the G to the U uh, case and the OV oracle for the G to the V case, right? So this uh, models the situation that the adversary can learn these related keys. Okay, so there are different handshake modes in, in key exchange, that means the combination of secrets is different across uh, key exchanges. For example, they may combine an ephemeral with a static key, or they might combine two ephemeral keys. So we have different variants that appear in the literature depending on which handshake mode they, they analyzed. And in the literature, they all just called them PRF ODH. Uh, and we, we thought, okay, we kind of want to give a unified definition. Um, to capture all these notions. And this uh, notion, we turned it LRPRF or the H, where the L indicates how many queries can be made to the left oracle, which will, was in our case the OU oracle, and the R indicates how many queries can be made to the right oracle, which was the uh, OV oracle. And L and R may take up one of three values. So either N, which means no queries allowed, so the adversary may learn no related values, S, which means a single query is allowed, and M, which means multiple queries are allowed, where multiple is to be understood as polynomial in the security parameter. So we have this unified notion of LRPRFODH, and if one writes down all the possible combinations of L and R taking up either N, S, or M, one ends up with these nine different notions. Um, for your navigation, we color coded them. So here, these notions here in blue, um, these are the ones where the uh, right oracle is set to N, so there are no queries to the right oracle, but queries to the left oracle, so they are one-sided on this, uh, with this notation, and here in yellow we have the ones where uh, only the right oracle may be queried, but not the left oracle, and if you mix up uh, blue and yellow, you end up with green, and these notions are the ones where both oracles are involved, and uh, up there we have and then PRF or the H in orange, which means no query to either oracle is allowed for the adversary. In the literature, we've seen only a subpart of this, so these four notions down here. For example, uh, the S and PRF or the H here uh, was used, so single query to the left oracle, no query to the right oracle, uh, is used when analyzing ephemeral Diffie-Hellman handshakes. Uh, both in TLS 1.2 and 1.3, it was used. Then if you go down, you have the MNPRF, MNPRF or the H. This is then for static Diffie-Hellman. And also if you in, uh, analyze, uh, we had some, an some uh, analyses on low latency key exchange modes, and then you have these kind of where both oracles are, are in there. So let's 
Let's look at some examples, uh, one from each, each level, kind of, and start with SMPRF48 to really, really get a feel for the definition. So SMPRF48, single query to the OU oracle, no query to the OV oracle. Um, in our key exchanges, the situation is like this. So we have the session, which is supposed to be distinguished, and the adversary learns a single related value. Then MNPRF or the H means the adversary learns multiple related values, which we indicate by this arrow here. So this oracle may then be queried multiple times. And if we go to MNPRF or the H, then actually this is the situation that we've had before, um, that we have static keys on both sides, so the adversary may learn multiple values from both oracles. Right. So we have all these different uh, notions right here, but what are the relations like? And we started off with the trivial implications, so nothing really interesting is here. You simply establish these by restricting the adversary's capabilities uh, in querying the oracle. So for example, if you want to go from MMPRF for the H to SMPRF for the H, you simply restrict the adversary by not allowing multiple queries uh, to the left oracle, but just a single one, so nothing really interesting is happening here. But the question is, which of these implications is strict? So which of these notions is strictly stronger than other notions? And for this, we were giving uh, separations. And some of the separations we were able to achieve uh, in the standard model. For some, we had to rely on the random oracle model. So let's just have a brief look. Um, these are the standard model separations that we were able to achieve. So they're kind of up in the in the upper part of the, of the picture. And these are the two separations where we had to rely on the random oracle model. And although for some of you it might have been late yesterday, but I'm sure you spot, like, I can't hide from you that this picture doesn't look complete. And it isn't. Because actually, for these two no, uh, implications here, we were not able to give uh, separations. And now you might wonder, how's that? looks pretty symmetrical all, all over. This is because I was hiding something uh, in the definition of PRF4DH, so we didn't discuss in detail what it looks like. And actually, um, there's an asymmetry in the definition of PRF4DH. So one of the oracles, the left oracle, is given to the adversary at the outset of the game, while the other one is only received with the challenge. And this asymmetry uh, we also have here in our separations, and we were not uh, able yet, in this case, to achieve the separation. Also because a PRF is kind of a memoryless thing, so we would have somehow to find a way to encode information in the PRF that one oracle could exploit but the other one could not. So all other implications are strict except for these two where we don't know yet whether they're strict. All right, so let's go to the instantiations. PRF4DH seems like a strange thing, but somehow it's, it's a Diffie-Hellman assumption, and we wondered, like, how can we instantiate PRF4DH from more well-known assumptions uh, that we know? And actually, in the case of NNPRF4DH, so up here, where you have no query to either oracle, we were able to instantiate that one in the standard model under DDH and just uh, usual PRF security in a group G. On the other end of the spectrum, um, we were able to, to instantiate it with a strong Diffie-Hellman in the programmable random oracle model. What do I mean by instantiate? Just to make it clear. So if you take a function, for example, for the NNPRF or the H case, that is PRF secure, and the DDH assumption also holds in that group, then we showed that the F is also NNPRF or the H secure. And this uh, is similarly for the MMPRF or the H instantiation. This kind of brings us naturally to our impossibility result, which is the last result I want to talk to you about today. We see that up here we have a standard model instantiation, while down here we're in the programmable random oracle model. And our impossibility result now shows that as soon as you give the adversary just a single access to one of the oracles, you will no longer have a standard model algebraic black box reduction. So as soon 
as we go from NNPRF4DH to SN or NSPRF4DH, we no longer have stand-up model algebraic black box reductions. Uh, more precisely, so the theorem states that if we assume decisional square Diffie-Hellman problem to be hard, which means to distinguish g to the a squared from g to the b for random a b given g to the a, we assume this to be hard, then we showed that there exists no efficient algebraic black box reduction from the weakest one-sided PRF or the H assumption to a DDH augmented problem. Now there's some, something to explain here. So algebraic reductions, most reductions that we know are algebraic, that just means that the reduction knows the representation of group elements and it makes use of them. And DDH augmented problems are a very wide and general class of cryptographic problems where the adversary is either asked to, um, to solve DDH or some abstract and independent hard cryptographic problem. And the adversary can decide on the fly whether it wants to solve um, DDH or this instance of a general cryptographic problem um, that it was handed. This impossibility, so maybe you've noticed, I've always said like PRF4DH is likely not a standard model assumption. This is because we have restrictions uh, in our impossibility result. So the first restriction is, which may allow to bypass the result that the decisional square Diffie-Hellman problem is hard. We know that the computational square Diffie-Hellman problem is equivalent to CDH, but it is not clear whether uh, the decisional version follows from DDH. So this is one restriction, and the other one is on the black box reduction to be algebraic. So the impossibility result may be by bypassed, um, but this is at best challenging to do. And with that, I'd like to summarize what we've learned today. So I hope you've seen that PRF4DH appears naturally in Diffie-Hellman based key exchange. And we did a systematic study of this assumption where we gave a unified definition and then established the relations between the different variants and we gave instantiations of PRF4DH. Our impossibility result then gave a strong indication that PRF4DH is not a standard model assumption, somewhat contradicting what we've been thinking before. Um, however, for everyone who's working on key exchange security, I believe, or we believe PRF4DH to be very useful because it gets you to simpler, more modular proofs. Um, usually you have a rather complex reduction to gap Diffie-Hellman or strong Diffie-Hellman in the programmable random oracle model. But by using pure F4DH, this is just a straightforward reduction that makes the proof much more easier. And with that, I'd like to conclude, and I'm very happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you.